I spent over a decade working in my clinical practice as a nutritionist alongside physicians to help get people off metformin. And then seeing this data that you're um, sharing in the book, that metformin might actually be one of those, well, it is, according to your data, those, those things that can help to switch on those longevity genes. So let's talk a little bit about that. So just for, if you can, for everybody, share what is metformin and why is this something that folks are now who don't have diabetes are taking? Yeah. So metformin is one of those gifts to humanity. It's on the list. So the World, World Health Organization has called it an essential medicine for humanity because it it's so safe. Um, it's not perfectly safe, but it's so safe. And the benefits are, are really clear, especially for diabetics. So there are th these three legs to the stool, the three pillars, sirtuins we talked about. We talked about mTOR and amino acids. The third one is called AMPK or AMP kinase. And this protein senses how much energy we have in the body. And if we have low amounts of energy, then it'll try to make more. And that's actually healthy. So you want to also trick your body into thinking it has low energy. You don't want low energy, but you can trick your body. So how do you do that? One is to be hungry. One is to exercise. And the other is to take a medicine that inhibits mitochondria and lowers the amount of energy that the cell's producing. So the body goes, holy crap, we're running out of energy and it'll make try to make more. And that's good for you. Now, the side effect of that is having better blood sugar levels. So your body becomes what's called insulin sensitive. You know this, that... When you're type 2 diabetic, your body doesn't register the insulin that your pancreas is putting out, and it just makes more and more insulin, and eventually your pancreas can give out. But the problem with that is you have high amounts of sugar, glucose, in your bloodstream, which will cross-link proteins and accelerate aging and all sorts of problems. Cardiovascular disease, wounds won't heal. And this is truly accelerating aging. We've, we've proven that uh, in our field. Metformin... Uh, is shown to be very effective against type 2 diabetes. And if you have type 2 diabetes, your doctor will typically put you on that medicine. Now, it comes from the French lilac. It's derived from a, a plant. So it's a xenohermetic molecule, actually. Um, and But it's classified as a drug. So it falls into that category. So you, in this country, at least, but not all, you need to get a prescription for it, which actually puts it out of reach for many people. But it also makes a lot of people wary that if it comes from a doctor, it might be a little bit fishy, mm -hmm. might be toxic. But it, it really has been shown in a study of over 100,000 people now, many studies actually, that diabetics who take metformin in the long run aren't just better off for diabetes, but are actually healthier and protected against cancer, heart disease, Alzheimer's and frailty, even more so than people who don't take metformin and who don't have type 2 diabetes. That's, it. That's stunning. Yeah. And when I heard that, I didn't believe it. My friend Neil Barzlai, Dr. Neil Barzlai is the world's expert. He told me that and I had to go and check on these, these papers, which I reference in the book. It's true. So I've become a real convert. And about two or so years ago, I started taking metformin. I don't have diabetes yet, but I was on my way up. I actually met my trajectory of the last 11 years and I could see I was headed for diabetes. It's in my family. Um, so I stopped it in its tracks and actually reversed type 2 diabetes, I wasn't, now I'm, I'm at no risk of having diabetes because I'm on metformin because I've done, made these changes in my life. Now, is it for everybody? I think if you're young and your blood glucose levels are low, not, need, not needed if you're exercising and eating, eating right. But if you're, I'm 50 now, and if your blood glucose goes up every year and you can't control that, metformin, I think, is a good thing to talk about with your doctor. Yeah. You know what? And just since you just mentioned that being 50 if folks aren't watching the video on YouTube, you look like maybe maybe 30s, you know, like 35, you know. Um, you, you have this, uh, in your, your energy is high, you're creating all these different uh, projects, working on different papers. Um, so you have that aspect, your physical appearance, like you're living, you're living proof of the stuff you talk about. And I can see you're just getting warmed up as well, you know. And so just a little shout out for those who are listening to audio, the guy's got it dialed in, you know? And so, but I wanted to bring this up because I also, with the Model Health Show, I want to stretch our thinking. Uh, we do, like I mentioned, you know, I was looking at what can I do for these patients to help them to normalize their blood sugar naturally, right? And removing the cause oftentimes was, you know, Mountain Dew or whatever it was, you know, just, but if we eliminate those things and your body is already in a healthy state, 
adding in these different medications, potentially, again, this is just a conversation I want to get going. There might be some potential benefits. Uh, and uh, this is still early, but it, it really got me thinking when I was reading the book. And um, one of the other aspects, I think this might go back to, because for me, I think that this competes, metformin can compete with some of the hormetic benefits of other things potentially, right? So can you talk a little bit about that? Maybe like, let's talk about exercise in that context because it's a hermetic stressor. Yeah. So how does that compete? Yeah, so remember we're working with a very complex machine, our bodies, and there are these three legs of the stool, but we don't know exactly which ones to tweak and when. We're still figuring this out as scientists. The good news is that we live in a world now where scientists can talk directly to the public and we put out newsletters, so you don't have to wait 10 years to hear it from your doctor or 20 years. But we, the, the honest truth is we, we don't know exactly what the best combination is, and we're learning actually that sometimes you don't want to combine them at the same time. You might want to do them on off days, and metformin and exercise is a case in point. Now, what we've just discovered uh, in a couple of papers that came out this year only is that metformin, because it, it tricks the body into having low energy by inhibiting the mitochondrial energy levels, if you give elderly patients metformin and give them weightlift, do uh, ask them to do weightlifting, they will bulk up both of them, all right, both sets with metformin without, but the ones that didn't get more metformin will have bigger muscles, okay? But not a lot, not a lot bigger. They all got bigger muscles. Um, so it is inhibiting the growth, the hypertrophy of muscle. But here's what's not talked about on social media or appreciated by a lot of people. Those people, those elderly people, were all the same strength, even though they didn't have the same sized muscles. Mm. So it still gave them the benefits. They just didn't look as bulky. So that's where I go back to vanity versus longevity. Right. But I think there is a way to optimize it. We don't know for sure. And Dr. Peter Atia, our friend, uh, he uh, argues this with me. And he also agrees, at least on this point, that we don't want to be taking metformin on days where our muscles are growing. That's probably the best, and that's what I try to do. I skip metformin when I go to the gym. But we disagree on exactly what the precise combination is. Uh, but he also thinks that uh, fasting for a long time is good. And I, I don't know if that's true. I find it extremely dif difficult to go for more than one day. I start to lose. My, my blood sugar goes too low, and I've measured it with one of those uh, monitors that you can right. stick them on. Right. Fascinating, by the way. Have you done that? Yeah, the 24 hour. I mean, it just stays with you. Two I weeks. haven't. No. Yeah. yeah, many of my friends have. You learn a lot. Yeah. Um, and actually, I didn't have breakfast. I can feel it right now. My blood sugar levels are going low. I should eat some chocolate, actually. <laughs> um, but yeah, if I go for three days or a week like Peter does, he actually is turning on pathways that I think right. are even more beneficial. Yeah. There's one called chaperone-mediated autophagy, which is basically super recycling of the body's proteins. And that's uh, something I think that he's right about. And uh, if you can go for three days... You know, more power to you.